This session uh, talks about how to interpret some important quantities uh, in uh, linear regression models or what we call usually an ordinary least square uh, regression models. So, so let's say the model, the structural model is specified as yi equal to beta zero, beta one, xi one, beta two, um, xi two, et cetera here. Right here, the sub-index i is a uh, index denoting uh, a row in the daily matrix. In most cases, going to be uh, individual, right? Individual, um, and then we use this generic letter k to denote uh, independent variables or predictors. So here, um, beta zero is the intercept, and then in the middle we have a list of uh, independent variables. And at the end, uh, we have error term or disturbance term, an um, epsilon i, uh, which captures uh, uh, variables that we just uh, omitted or we uh, don't know about. Um, and um, um, the usual quantities, uh, statistics, uh, used for interpretations include beta zero, the intercept, beta k, and the expected value of uh, y, that is the response variable, right, given x vector, or their estimates beta zero hat beta k. The k here uh, refers to uh, the slope for a generic variable xk and yi hat. So here, um, I use a hat to denote expected or estimated, excuse me, estimated uh, value. What's the meaning of beta zero? Beta zero is the expected value of yi, or the conditional value of yi, given uh, x vector, given x vector vector when all other variables are set to be zero. Whether that quantity is meaningful or not really depends on the substantive meaning of uh, zero for uh, uh, the predictors. So how about increase the value of a generic variable xk here, a generic variable xk by one unit, by one unit. So in the previous equation, we set xk, uh, a generic variable xk to be equal to a specific, a specific value xk. Now we wanna increase that value by one unit. What? we will get. Well, uh, everything else stays the same, right? Everything else stays the same in the equation. The only thing uh, that's slightly different is for the xk, this generic variable, okay? um, that variable is gonna increase its value by one unit. So within the parentheses, we, we have xk plus one. And uh, uh, if we expand uh, the product of these two terms, then we will get is beta k, multiplied by xk and beta k. And that's pretty uh, straightforward um, um, algebra. And uh, what we can do next is to take a difference uh, between uh, the first expected value and the second expected value. Okay? That is, we're gonna subtract expected value of y uh, given um, xk equal to xk from the expected value of, um, of yi, given xk, this generic variable, equal to um, xk plus one, that is increase one unit. And what we'll get? Well, if you subtract these two equations, the only thing uh, that is, um, different here in the second equation is we have this additional term 
beta k? Um, well, for each unit increase in xk, we would expect y increased by beta k unit. Yeah? This interpretation is location free. That is, it does not matter where any of the uh, predictors or uh, independent variables uh, is located. The effect of xk, a generic variable on y, does not change. So that makes our interpretation pretty uh, uh, straightforward. Next, uh, let me talk about discrete change. So first is definition of discrete, discrete change. Discrete change is a ratio of uh, delta y over delta k. The amount of change in y uh, could be very large or could be infinitesimal, very small in y, relative to, in the format of, of ratio, relative to a discrete change in xk, again, a generic uh, variable xk could be any of the predictors. And here, a discrete change in xk could be one unit, could be two units, could be one standard deviation, could be 1.75 standard deviations in xk. It doesn't matter. Okay. And uh, let's uh, first uh, go through a bit of notation. So let's define expected value of y given vector. Or sometimes we can see the predicted value of y given x. But the predicted, uh, in a lot of times, we're talking about the estimated. Okay? And expected, uh, in most cases, refers to kind of theoretical quantity. So ha we have this theoretical quantity, the expected value of y, or the conditional value of y, given uh, x vector. Okay? And... Uh, uh, also, uh, given that uh, we have a generic variable xk, which is set to the value of xk, okay? And we have uh, another quantity, the expected value of y, given the generic variable xk, uh, increased to the value of xk plus one. So the only thing that's different here in the second quantity is that, okay? So without uh, calculation, right? Is that the generic variable xk uh, increases by one unit, okay? And what we wanna do, well here, we wanna take a difference between these two quantities. Well, that is delta y, right? Why? Because we love this quantity and also, What's in the denominator? Well, it's delta xk, and what is that quantity? Is one, right? Because xk plus one minus xk is one unit. Calculate this quantity, right? So um, in the uh, denominator, right? In the denominator, well, delta xk, because we just uh, changed the generic variable xk by one unit. So that term disappears, right? You know, any quantity divided by one is gonna be any whatever quantity in the numerator. So what we have is the numerator, numerator on the right-hand side. So what's in the numerator? Well, what's in the numerator for the first term is this quantity, uh, which we just uh, derived uh, uh, in one of the previous slides, okay? Uh, given the zero conditional mean assumption, Right, given the conditional mean assumption. So this quantity becomes this one, and this quantity becomes this term. So uh, if we carry through the calculation, well, here, if we expand this term, we get these two terms. And with the, for the second one, it does not change. And uh, after we do the subtraction, again, what we have is beta k. 
let's take uh, the result uh, as given. So the partial derivative of y uh, with respect to xk, assuming uh, our structural model holds, right? In the first slide, uh, we have uh, the partial derivative of y. So here is the expected value of y given x. Uh, with respect to xk, a generic variable xk is equal to beta k. So the partial or the marginal is equivalent of the discrete change. So what is partial? Partial in linear regression model, a linear uh, OLS regression is the slope of the line relating y and xk, a generic variable xk, holding all other variables constant. Since the model is linear, the value of the partial is a constant beta k. So again, it doesn't matter the values of any of the predictors. It does not depend on the level of xk, the generic variable xk, or the slope that corresponds to xk. And it does not depend on value of other xk axes in the model. So that's very nice. And also, uh, if you pay attention to uh, the last couple of slides, you would notice that in the, the linear regression model or the classical OLS regression, the partial here, right? The partial is equivalent of discrete change, is equal to the what? Uh, the slope corresponding to uh, excuse me, the slope for its corresponding x variable or predictors. And this allows a pretty simple interpretation. What is that? For a unit increasing xk, a generic variable xk, the expected change in the y equals beta k, holding all other variables constant. And here, uh, of course, we can flesh out interpretations by adding more details about what xk is excuse me, what y is. And sometimes the predictors are dummy variables. So the interpretation is gonna become having um, characteristic um, xk, let's say gender or race, as opposed to not having the, that characteristic is going to result in the expected change of beta k in y, holding all other variables constant. So 